Hey all. There was a wine ad a while back that uh, the catchphrase was uh, life is too short to drink uh, cheap wine. And uh, I was thinking about that actually as I was thinking about uh, about this idea of type defs. Um, types themselves um, serve a number of purposes and, and one of them is that they actually serve a documentation purpose um, in much the same way that we seek to have good variable naming we want to have um, proper or good naming conventions for our function so that when we look at um, the name of a function or a name of a variable we actually have a sense of what it is in fact being used for um, let me give you an example here. In fact, I have something that uh, that is kind of taken from the from the current project. Okay, so if you take a look, um, here's some code that's written without type defs. Um, two print functions that uh, you'll probably probably actually um, are or will be implementing um, in your project. Okay, so here we have this print function. It takes a const vector of int ampersand or like a const reference to a vector of ints b. And a and this other one that takes a const vector of actually I'm sorry there should be a pair here um, see so it's pair of int vector of int um, incidentally this space is incredibly important if you leave this space off there's all kinds of compiler errors um, reference okay so it takes a a constant vector of pairs of ints vector of ints things okay so the question is what do these print functions do I mean obviously they print but what do they print right and the whole point is that the point is that by looking at the signatures of these functions it's incredibly difficult to kind of figure out what each one of these things is supposed to do. Now you might argue that well we could actually add to the uh, names of these functions um, to better specify what those functions are supposed to do. But the point is that doing that um, still misses another idea and that is you know this whole thing of what these particular types themselves are okay one is you know you'll notice okay this one's fairly easy to type but I mean this one imagine every time you need one of these things you're gonna actually have to type out all of this mess of stuff um, and just you know thinking in those terms is really really difficult because you're you're thinking of one abstraction wrapped up in another abstraction etc okay this is where type defs come in okay so type defs are simply a way in C++ and actually in C to come up with a new name for a type okay you can you basically create a new name that is representative of the kind of thing that you're dealing with so for instance um, in our um, in our project we're dealing with this concept of a board okay we're representing our board as a vector of ints okay so if I do this I say that I'm now going to say I'm going to say type def board is a vector of ints okay that means that instead of having this I can now write the following. And we can see immediately it is much more readable, right? It's much easier to read. It's also much easier to remember because once I have this type def in place, any time I have the idea of writing a function that takes a board, writing a function that returns a board, creating a variable that is a board, all I have to think about is the word board. I don't have to remember this vector of int thing. Okay. Now, similarly, this one I'm actually going to uh, I'm actually going to break down into into a couple of parts. Okay, so I'm going to sort of break it down um, from the inside out. Okay, so first I'm going to take uh, this little part here, this pair int vector int thing. Okay, so that, um, and I'll just keep all my type defs um, together. I don't necessarily need to. So this pair of int and well, actually, what is a board? is a 
POPENT, which stands for a population entry. Okay, so in the population, a population is basic. The population in um, the genetic algorithms is basically just a collection of your individual, um, in our case, our boards, and we need to maintain its fitness value. Okay, so essentially, in this, in that vector, we're going to store. We're going to have entries that basically are two things. That's all a pair is. Okay, a pair object basically has a first element, and in this case, it will be an int, which is the fitness, and it has a second element. And that is, in this case, is going to be a board. Okay, so now we can say pop ent anytime we want to refer to something that's going to be stored in the population. Then from there, I can use that to say I want a type def um, and I want a vector that stores pop ents. And that will be my population type. Okay, so once I have that, then this whole mess here um, becomes much, much simpler. Um, instead, what we'll have is the following. Delete all of this, and that is just our population type. Okay. So it looks like that. Right. Um, again, what this also means is that if I want to define a board, I can just say board my board. Right. And there it is. Right. Go ahead and actually try to run this. Let's see, it doesn't actually do anything just yet because we haven't done anything with it. Um, but nevertheless, um, we do actually have a proper board, which really is which. Um, can still be used, um, we can use the same vector functions on it. So for instance, I can say my board pushback and um, put some element into there. Okay, and then I can say see out my board at. Okay, let's verify that it actually went in there. So I do that, and there is the four taken right out of the board. Okay. So again, the whole idea behind type defs is it just makes your life simpler in terms of thinking about um, the particular types rather than having to think about these types of uh, messy type declarations.